So welcome to my channel everybody. My name is Paul Smyers and if you explore my site here you'll see I talk a lot about perception and ancient mysteries and all kinds of interesting fascinating rabbit holes I've been down. And one of the things I explore is the concept of uh, ancient teachers, the so-called avatars, the so-called saviors and the, the Mahatmas and the great souls and so on that History is recorded and uh, documented and there's been many stories about many different kinds of you might call God man. That's the subject of this of this video here. And why I talk about that, it's a very, very fascinating subject and I was born uh, in India. My parents were missionaries. I, my dad was a Methodist minister and so was my grandfather and they traveled a lot. and. I got to see a very different aspect of, of the world when I was growing up because I was in India and I came to America when I was 14. And I had a very traditional basic high school in the 60s and went off to college in 1970 and there encountered a whole bunch of other kinds of people and exploring and we got into dialogues and so on. I got interested in some of these very, very fascinating subjects about, well, Again, Jesus. For example, my parents were missionaries and I got taught about Jesus and I had to read the Bible and go to Sunday school and that was my life. I'm, a lot of my relatives were all Christians and that was what I got taught. But at the same time, I had my own inner experience and I went off to college and I started talking to people and I realized, you know, was Jesus a Messiah? Was Who was this Jesus person, you see? <laughs> so... <clears throat> Without getting into specifically talk about that particular person, I want to let people know that a lot of people don't realize this in America, the traditional Christianity and so on. Many of them don't travel, they haven't studied Hinduism or so on. But at the same time, that there is an age-old concept in the Hindu religion of great sages and yogis and so on. And the concept of a God-man, basically that in, in a human body, uh, there can be a kind of presence where they're connected to the divine in some spectacular way and they have various powers and so on. Because if you look at the Christian religion, you talk about Jesus and some of the other apostles and so on and John and all they supposedly had these, they could bless people and they could uh, heal people and do different things and they had a pertinent energy. Now, so again, we're really talking about a specific not just talking nice words. These great sages, uh, they don't just talk nice words. They they uh, demonstrate a certain amount of energy. And again, if you go and compare to the, what was happening in India at the time, let's say about 2,000 years ago, uh, they had a long, long history of great sages coming in. And one very uh, misunderstanding about the Hindu religion uh, a lot of people think that the Hindu religion has just all these gods and everything and you no, know, there's a certain basic oneness of the universe and the Hindu religion goes back very many many thousands of years and it has a lot to do with experience. It's not about theory. It's a, there's an experiential thing that people experience God and then because God is infinite and vast in all kinds of aspects and manifestations that infinite God has all kinds of manifestations it's not it's just one God one infinite infinity of beingness that has so many di different expressions you see and that's why they had that concept now the, the Hindu t tradition <coughs> teaches in the Buddhist the Buddhist came later but basically that tradition of experiential religion goes back very, very long time and there were practitioners. It wasn't just a lot of words. They had techniques. These teachers, the great sages that they honored, the people who wrote the Upanishads and Patanjali and many, many others, they transmitted energy and they did that. There was, <laughs> there was techniques that allowed their body to handle the circulation of energy. They did things with their body and they meditated and they just didn't they had, they just, there's a technology in their body that is, I'll talk about a little bit, but the Hindu's concept was that, you know, every human being wants to be one with God. We want to be immersed in God. We want to love God, and we want to feel that connection 
And that's what the Hindu religion is about, is a personal expression, is a feeling relationship with that infinity through the window, you might say, of a, a, a deity of some kind that represents a certain aspect because if you love, a, even if people love their cows or their dogs and they just feel almost like the divine feeling of, oh my God, you know, I love. Because when we love other beings, we're really loving the oneness of our own existence, you see. And the, the difference between the Hindu concept of a, a great savior or comes back and forth again in cycles, depending on the need and the location that these beings come in, because the whole tradition is, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, which is basically, you know, when there's darkness in the land and when, uh, you know, violence and so on, and people don't respect human life, then that being comes with great power. Now, the power that these beings have isn't necessarily like any kind of weapon. It's, it's just sort of a radiance that, for example, if you look at, say, a bacteria or so on, and, and the bacteria get exposed to, say, ultraviolet light or sunshine, well, it's good by bacteria because that sunshine is an irresistible force. To, let's say, for example, you have like something on a, on a sidewalk and the heat, sun heats it up and all of a sudden, like, whatever bacteria was there is burned off to a crisp because the sidewalk is 150 degrees or something, you see? So there's an essential power of these manifestations of these deities that when they are on the earth, they also left a presence there. And that's why the Buddhists have a stupa where they is basically shaped like an apex, just like a big... It's because of the energy flow, that the energy is flowing from <clears throat> having manifested on the earth like a fire. It just radiates out into the space. And the technology of this body is just like... It's really quite amazing, and that's one thing that we miss in some of the Western types of teachings about Christianity, because the early Christian Christian religion was very mystical. You see, there was a really mystical aspect of it, the, the symbolism and the artwork and the metaphysics of it and the cosmic nature of it and the, the solar system nature of it. And they, I mean, Jesus was was used as a symbol of the sun and the twelve disciples and the planets and da da da, they, you know, people, Mother Mary is like the moon and it, there's just an incredible amount of embedded symbolism in the Christian religion in the early part of the religion and now a lot of people they don't even know about that part, you see, and but this was a tradition in the Eastern religions, especially like in Hinduism, where they were actually again it was a technology, it was a techniques that. Those people who want to be free, they, they devote themselves to God and they eat purely and they abide by certain good healthy principles and they run their family and so on. And then when death comes, you know, they go back into the heavenly world and so on. That's the, you know, they go into a joyful peace. But there's a, a concept about reincarnation that, you know, we can put aside for a second because there's a lot of... Uh, you know, Christian and Muslims don't believe in that, but there's a tradition in all ancient teachings that there's a soul, we have a soul. This is the whole the whole message of a, a great teacher and a sage on this planet is to teach people a couple of really important things. And one is, we're not the body. We live in a body, we're born by a certain grace, we just come here, by joy we are born, by joy we live, and to joy we go. This is the statement from the Upanishads. Basically, the idea is, you know, you're created with the beautiful joy of the Almighty, and you live every being, every minute of your life, you're being breathed, and Adam's being sustained by the joy of the bliss of the Almighty God. And then at the time that you leave, you know, the real, the real part of our soul goes back into that bliss. You see, because the body is temporary. This is an age-old thing. The body is temporary. It's a vehicle. You, it's like a car. You get in the car, you drive for a while, you get to the destination, and then you get out of the car. It's a different concept of the spiritual life in, in the Far East, for example, in India and so on. <clears throat> now, I'm going to talk about some interesting books here. I might have to make several videos. And why is this important? Because... Right now, there's a lot of religions, and every religion, they want the Bodhisattva to come, that's the Buddhist. They want the 
the Messianic uh, Muslim Messiah to come, the Jews are, want a Messiah, the Christians want a Messiah, everybody's hoping, like, please send us, hurry up, please, because it's been so, 2,000 years or 3,000 years, we're still waiting, could you please hurry it up so we don't kill ourselves and have wars over this? You see, so it's a very relevant subject. We have a problem out here because there's people wait, waiting and we don't really know what Jesus looked like. We don't know what the Messiah is going to look like. And for all we know, he's flying around the plane somewhere right now. Or maybe he's in a UFO. Or maybe he's on the moon waiting to say, man, to get those guys together. I'll be over there in a minute. If, if they stop fighting for a bit, or maybe I'll come down there, you know. But this is all the ideas that we have about the the Savior. What's it going to do? What's the, and again back to the, what a great teacher is teach what is saving being being saved from what you see this life like the buddha said can be misery it just could be a lot of difficulties and frustration if you don't even know who you are you it's like if you're at a party you don't know who you are and you don't know who the guests are and you don't know why you're at the party and you just like well you know that's pretty weird. It's just a weird feeling. We, we're in this life. We don't know why we're here. We don't know who made us or how we got here. Or whatever. We're just born here. So the thing about this, the cyclic incarnations of various beings, because ultimately these great sages, they don't just leave. You see, the soul is immortal. If we, see, if we really believe that after thousands and thousands of years, there have been so many sages and so many enlightened beings like just millions and millions of them where do you think they go if i mean if <laughs> there's there's a certain hierarchy of beingness in the cosmos that you talk about the almighty god that's the what the hindus say is that that's what you can't say anything about i mean what are you going to say about the infinite 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 i mean you see the the human experience of that infinity is just a morsel if we get one drop of that one drop of that beautiful bliss It'll make our day or make our whole life, you see? And this is the whole idea of an initiation where these sages say, I'm not just going to teach you some words. I'm going to show you some techniques so that wherever you go, you're like, you'll be fine. I'll teach you how to ride a bicycle, watch you for a bit while you learn how to ride it, and then go off, your, go off and explore with this life, you see? <laughs> because <clears throat> the different concept of a, of a Bhavatar is that they are performing a service. Any, all of us want to perform service. We, we all want to perform service. Even dogs like to fetch something. You know, see, there's, there's a, a participation in this cosmos that we can be part of that creative process. And this is what the teachers teach us. They, they don't just give us nice words. They give us functional techniques to help us have an internal experience and if there's even one way the one way is to go from the outside to the inside so if we go inside then we can start experiencing our real nature because when when you say the word god man for example what is a god man well what is god say that's a start with that word <laughs> how do you define god then if it's infinite <laughs> see and then man, okay, what's a man? You see, and this is what the sages have taught. Look, go look in the mirror and see how incredible this creation is. You can rationalize it, explain it, talk, say it's science or whatever, but I'll tell you what, you look in the mirror and you see, I'm still breathing after 71 years. I'm still having a nice time here. There's a lot of gratitude to be expressed. And again, the human life is is much more magical and fantastic you see than you know many religions make it out to be because what happened is when people get to advanced stage of, of practicing certain techniques again there's ancient knowledge like uh, the holy science like this guy he was a guru he was a sage he, he had uh, he wrote this very simple book here basically and he was a uh, you know <laughs> inspired a lot of people. We see there's many people who have come and gone on this planet that we, we aren't even told about here. But there's a lot of things that you can find out and by researching and uh, find out that basically these sages, these beings, and every all of us doing service here, we're just, it's a constant effort to express 
as above, so be love. Heaven on earth. We want the absolute beautifulest, most fantastic, most loving, most incredible thing to happen anywhere in this universe, on this planet. That's why all the art, all the music, all the fantastic expressions and people dance and everything that human beings are capable of doing is an absolutely fantastic thing and we all have a little role. You see, an avatar might be a guru or something like that and they have a particular function, okay? But their, their job is to teach us or show us that we are like them. You see, we are. there's no difference. You see, there's a saying in the Hindu teaching about there's four kinds of gurus. I heard this little pair of the teachers. One is like a candle. The candle burns for a while and it's fine. Maybe it'll light a few more and it flickers and it gives some light and it's not very bright. But then it, it burns down and then it's gone. That's one kind of teacher. Another kind of teacher is like incense. The incense, it, it's beautiful, it flavors the whole room for a while, and it kind of lingers for a while, and it makes a nice scent and spreads around and makes a nice beautiful environment sometimes, and then it's gone. Another kind of uh, uh, a teacher is like, they are like the philosopher's stone, okay? They could touch something and make it into gold. But then there's another teacher that's like gold, that is like a magnet. Wherever they go, they can make any other piece of steel like a magnet, just like them. And that's the whole idea of the, the great teachers, the great angels, of the heavenly beings, and all the different elementals and everything are moving along in this creation so that more and more beauty, and more and more bliss, and more and more joy can happen throughout the universe. And we look out in the space with these telescopes and go, oh my God, like what kind of things have been created there? And, you know, when speaking of the question of what is God, well, I was brought up always believing in God, but boy, you know, when you look up at the stars, like, well, I think, I, I don't think I'm going to learn much about God because it's so big, you know. So it has to be filtered down, and that's what these great teachers do. They There's a whole, you know, hierarchy, not like top-down obedience type of hierarchy but a kind of flowing of energy and and love and joy from the cosmic deity the cosmic infinity of beingness you might say that kind of seeps out into the creation and we're all part of it we get to dance we get to we get to do things here and we get to create things and be part of it but we can also help to understand what we are and that's another big question that these great sages they they are interested in telling us who we are and a lot of the times they get mistaken it's like well they're trying to talk about themselves well actually the the you know there's a per personal revelation that we can all experience that we there's really just kind of a oneness there's there's a unity of beingness between us if we get to that elemental level just on the level of the the atoms of the quantum elements or whatever it's like we're all intertwined with each other there's this consciousness witness that we have and our true identity is vast beyond our concept and <laughs> we need to explore that in this life so what i want to do is run through a quick bunch of books here and i want to have a discussion and discuss this topic because what do people think God is anyway? I've been asked this question, well, what is God? Well, you know, you got a few hours or, or just total silence, you know, because what can you say about the infinity things? You can talk about your experience. Well, like the, the people who looked at an elephant, a blind man who looked at an elephant, one feels a tail, one feels a trunk, and one feels a sigh, one feels a tusk, and they all argue about what the elephant is. You see, but there's only one elephant. You see, there's one God. It's just what aspect of it are we perceiving? Now, all human beings need peace and love. So that's what we get. We get the most, the most important thing that a guru will teach us is how to have peace and joy in our life. Practical peace. So you wake up in the morning, you can get up and do your thing and enjoy your, your beautiful life. Now, there's a lot of other things you can learn. There's esoteric stuff, and there's, there's all, but first tie the peace in your life, and then maybe some of these other big subjects can come up. But there are books like Raising the Initiations, 
initiation is just basically a wake-up call basically we we you know someone comes and says okay look this way and then you have a totally different window and you go ah okay and again one of the most important things that the so-called eternal life is to understand that we're not this body we have dreams we fly our body people have lucid dreaming people have near-death experiences there's an so many testimonies, sages, you know, meditation, people go out of their body. We're not the body. We identify with the body a lot of times, and that causes a lot of pain and sorrow. But, you know, it's like, okay, let's say you have a horse, and the horse gets a broken leg. Well, you get off the horse, you see. This body that we have has its limits, and the senses have its limits. But, again, the great teachers will teach us how to expand our perception. There's books like The Light of the Soul, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, and uh, Laya Yoga, like this one here. Because the, the Hindu tradition was to take people, okay, let's say the, you know, not everybody wants to be a Mahatma and be a guru, or, or, or you don't really want to be a guru, but a lot of people don't want to have that extreme type of practice. Okay, and but some people do. And for a long time on the history of this planet, there was no TV. It wasn't like you can go to the movie theater and watch the game. Basically, what are you going to do? Well, I guess I'll go back to my cave and meditate for a while. <laughs> and after a while, they just start having little meetings together and say, Man, I, I meditated all day yesterday and I'll tell you what happened to me. Something was pretty incredible that happened to me. You see, so there's a concept about what religion is and what God is and you know whether God's going to appear a certain way and you know how is he going to look and he's going to have a beard and maybe maybe he has a beard people get mad at him and then he you know some people won't like him with a beard I mean it's just this kinds of, of arguments that happen on our planet because of these kinds of concepts it's really a tragic thing now um, I haven't been able to get into some of these books here but I want to get into some of them here I'll just read this really quickly here in my uh, investigation as a brought up as a Christian here I was uh, introduced to some interesting books when I was in college and shortly after that I learned how to meditate and when I was 20 years old in about 1972 but in my research I came across this line of books here again um, the Lucis Trust these are very interesting books if you read them uh, but this one here is about the, the reappearance of the Christ. Now, you see, <laughs> the Hindus accept Christ. This is not really a Hindu book. This is about, and what it basically says is like the, the concept of the avatar here. See if I can read a bit here. An avatar who is one who has a peculiar capacity and a self-initiated task and preordained destiny to transmit energy or divine power this is necessarily a deep mystery. Okay, for the Christ who was apparently transmitted the divine energy of, of love directly onto the planet. Okay, because again, there's cyclic nature of the cosmos. This is, you want to know how the cosmos works? Well, you got to pick up one of these books like one of these things here, you know, like the Treatise on Cosmic Fire. Like, okay, I just learned a little bit of that, not much. But the whole idea is that the these great beings and the whole hosts of beings, you might say, are all involved in various aspects of making Earth a beautiful place or making humanity a beautiful place. But, you know, it's like, you know, humanity is is not listening a lot of times, you know, to, to the beautiful words and the beautiful teachings of some of these great teachers, you know. But... Avatars or divine messengers are linked with the concept of some subjective spiritual order or hierarchy of spiritual lives who are concerned with the developing welfare of humanity. All we really know is that down the ages, great and divine representatives of God embody divine purpose and affect the entire world in such a manner that their names and their influence are known for and felt for thousands of years. Okay. You see... There's a saying, you know, all that comes, all beauty comes from God, you might say. So if you're experiencing a lot of joy and you're experiencing a lot of kindness and love in your life, you know, it's not coming from the devil, you know. So these teachers all brought love and joy and various aspects and, and clarity. Now, 
you know, the tradition in the Hindu culture would be that these beings, they, like the world gets so dark, okay, and it needed so much love, it was just completely, completely dark, and there was a lot of horrible things going on, still are, but for example, when Jesus appeared, if Jesus appeared back in the in India at that time, he would have been like a great sage because they had that tradition there. They, oh, well, yeah, they just feel something from the man and they just like, oh, they would have really honored him. But it, when he was <laughs> pretty much a threat to the Romans and a lot of other problems that happened there, uh, communication problems and so on, so we know the story. But the whole idea of a body, you know, let's say if God is infinite, I often ask this question, okay, that the, let's say people believe in Jesus, and Jesus came or whatever, but if Jesus is someone you can pray to, then he's not a body, right? Because, or, you know, he doesn't have a body anymore, or he what, he could, if he, if he was immortal from the beginning and the son of God, then how could he die? You see, he's like, these beings like okay it's a conscious birth okay i take a body and i live it for a while consciously knowing that i'm not the body and then i leave the body consciously now there's been a lot of great uh, you know teachers and so on and students and who've left their body consciously and you know we probably have a lot more consciousness before we're born because there are people who be almost like have a dream about before being born and they choose their parents and so on so there's a lot of mystery in our consciousness about who we are and if if a great being like that can take a body and be living in a body for a while and then basically just step out of the body you might say you know they get killed or whatever they just step out of the body uh, then the point is that we can. That's the whole idea with the so-called eternal life, okay, that we're not this body, never were this body, and that when we integrate our little awareness with the spirit of joy and God inside that is shown to us in initiation, it's like, okay, that's what the blessing was, the, the putting on hands and all this kind of stuff would, would be like, okay, I make a connection in my heart, in my inner feeling with that divine, the personal God, you might say, which in India was called the Ishwara or the Isa. Was a, but I don't want to make these videos too long. I'm going to explore this in a few other videos, and I want to share some other books here, because one of them is Initiation in Human and Solar, okay? It's not just us that are, are moved along. Humanity is, is a group, is a world soul, you might say, the body of humanity, humanity, and that, you know, if God cares about us, that beautiful, infinite joy cares about us, well, then there's going to be a whole bunch of systems to help us, including the incarnations and the fact that we can purify our body and have our pineal gland opened up and we can experience God. That's the whole idea, that, that we can finally, in our human body, be aware simultaneously of the... the the God, the beautiful, not just the love of God, but even to start understanding some of how creation works, you see, and be part of that process on some mental and emotional level, because there's a whole mystery to our own being, you see. There's a lot more to us than this body. So I'll end this video right here, and I'm going to make another one that's going to get into some of these other books because it's pretty fascinating. It goes back, this whole idea of the God man and so on goes back way, 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 way. I mean, it goes back thousands and thousands of years. That's all the whole idea of the God kings and the, the kings from heaven and, and you know, even to the modern era where they said God is blessing our war or whatever, you know. There's a whole concept embedded in this this thing, and it's just it's causing some serious problems right now in the world with the, everybody uh, on edge, kind of wondering, well, what's going to happen? Is is the Messiah going to come any day now? And how is he going to? Are we going to recognize him? Is going to come in a UFO, or how's it going to happen? You know, so that's another subject. But um, I hope you'd explore this uh, subject with me some more and follow me in some of my other videos. So thanks again for, for listening.